Hi guys, today we're going to reverse engineer my last video, which you can see playing here. This was shot at night with available light only using Filmic Pro on my iPhone 7 Plus. I want to show you the camera settings you need to keep in mind when you shoot low light, and we'll dig into noise reduction in DaVinci Resolve. First, let me say none of this will help you shoot in no light. If there's not enough light to get an acceptable exposure using the settings I'm going to show you, then you don't have enough light to begin with. When I shoot with my iPhone SE, I simply don't bother with low light. With the iPhone 7 and newer, the aperture of the wide angle lens has been improved to f1.8, which makes a significant difference. Let's start with Filmic Pro. There's a few things you need to keep in mind when it comes to shooting in low light. Shoot 4K at maximum bitrate. You want to record as much information as you can. I recommend shooting 4K, but editing and exporting in HD. Start by locking your ISO at its lowest setting. Increasing ISO is the last resort. Use your fastest aperture lens. On the iPhone 7, 7 Plus and newer, this is the wide angle camera at f1.8. If the image is underexposed, your first step is to set the shutter speed to match the frame rate. This is the equivalent of a 360 degree shutter. For example, if your frame rate is 25 frames per second, choose 1 25th of a second shutter speed. A bit of extra motion blur is better than the extra noise. If the image is still too dark, then you have no choice but to increase ISO. Increase ISO the minimum amount required to get a good exposure. I've used a maximum of ISO 125. You can clean up video noise with acceptable results up to about ISO 125 with temporal noise reduction in DaVinci Resolve. The noise reduction tools are only available in DaVinci Resolve Studio and not in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Now that we've covered camera tips, let's compare how much video noise we can expect as we increase the ISO from 22 to 125 and finally to 400. At ISO 22, we have the cleanest image. We've set the shutter speed to the same value as the frame rate, which is 1 25th of a second here, in order to let as much light hit the image sensor as possible. You can see we're capturing the brightest parts of the image, but really no shadows or midtones. In fact, there's very little separation in levels between deep shadows and midtones, which will make it impossible to bring up the midtone levels in post. At ISO 125, in my opinion, I found the best compromise between video noise introduced and getting some usable information back into the midtones. At ISO 400, we've got even more information in the shadows. We can now see there are some clouds in the night sky. However, the video noise is too high and will be difficult to reduce. Let's take a look at the effects of temporal noise reduction applied in DaVinci Resolve at these different ISO settings. At ISO 22, we're dealing with the darkest image, but also the cleanest if we don't push up the shadow levels. However, if we want to see anything, we have no choice but to bring the levels up. So let's take a closer look at the video noise this introduces and how much we can reduce the noise as we apply more noise reduction. The thing about noise reduction is that you can never get something for nothing. Actually, that's true of everything when it comes to correcting images in post-production. You can aggressively reduce noise, but the result is often a very processed plastic look. Noise reduction should be used as lightly as possible and often only in specific areas of the image that need it. In the examples you will see here and in the video test itself, noise reduction is applied to the entire image. I did this in order to keep it simple to break down. But if you watch this tutorial to the end, I'll briefly show you how you can get more selective with your noise reduction. Noise can be present in the luminance or chroma channels, and often in a specific chroma channel more than the others. Let's take a look at what happens when we apply temporal noise reduction to the chroma channel instead of the luma channel. Comparing noise reduction in luma versus chroma channels, you'll see that there's much less effect on the chroma channel. In our situation, the noise is mostly in the luma channel, and that's where we need to reduce it. Now we'll take a look at the noise levels and the effects of some light temporal noise reduction at ISO 125. From this point on, we're only applying noise reduction to the Luma channel and at a value of 20, which is the maximum I want to use.
Lastly, let's take a look at ISO 400. One final quick comparison and it should be clear why I consider ISO 125 the maximum I'll shoot and why for this shot it's the best compromise between having some separation between shadows and midtones and manageable video noise. One trick that I use universally in all my videos is to use some scanned film grain right at the end. Less is more and so it may not even be noticeable in the small amounts I use it, but the pattern of film grain is far more pleasing to the eye than video noise. It can often hide minor video artifacts, add some pleasing texture and the impression of more detail in the image than was actually captured. Let's take a look at a full multi-pass breakdown of this entire video. Not every step in every shot is going to be obvious, especially after being compressed by YouTube. After this, I'll show you how I applied noise reduction in DaVinci Resolve, and lastly, a couple of more advanced ways to apply noise reduction. If you're completely new to DaVinci Resolve, I'd recommend you watch my introductory color correction concepts video, which you'll find in the color tutorials playlist section on my channel. Noise reduction should be applied quite early in the node tree, 
I would suggest directly after your primary corrections, where you've adjusted basic levels, curves, and color balance. The noise reduction tools sit under the motion effects tab. In this case, we're using temporal noise reduction in the Luma channel only. We'll leave frame averaging at one, so it will analyze and average one frame after the current frame in order to intelligently separate video noise from motion. And I'm sticking to a Luma threshold value of 20 and chroma at zero. Noise reduction is GPU intensive, and if your computer doesn't have enough GPU memory, you may run into problems trying to use it. Here's a bit of a bonus. Going into too much detail is beyond the purpose of this tutorial, but I'll quickly show you a couple of things. The goal of noise reduction is to reduce noise only where it exists, and not necessarily across the entire image. When there is noise in your chroma channels, sometimes the noise is worse in one particular channel, so we can separate out RGB chroma channels using a splitter combiner node and apply noise reduction to only one of the channels. If there is one specific part of the image which shows a lot of noise, you can use a power window to mask only that area and selectively apply noise reduction just to that part of the image. A power window can be tracked if it's on a moving object or if the camera moves. Multiple power windows can be used to mask multiple areas of a shot, or a selection can be made using the qualifier tools, or a combination of a power window and the qualifier. Make sure to separate these operations into nodes and label the nodes so you can keep track of them. That's it for this tutorial. I think we've covered a lot for one session, and the best way to get to grips with it all is to practice. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and please share the tutorial if you think it might help someone else. Feel free to leave a comment or ask a question. See you next time.